Alrighty guys, we are back with another motherboard unboxing and today I'll be taking a look at the Tough B850 BTF Wi-Fi. This is the board here. We're going to quickly go through the box, get the board out. I literally have not even opened this board yet. This might be a bit noisy, so I'll quickly take this out now. Alright, get that out of the way. That is literally... Wait. There's some more. Under here. Some stickers. That's probably doesn't really matter for too many people, but it is kind of cool. Don't even know if you can oh yeah, you can see them. Just some tough stickers. Alright. So I believe this is AMD's first BTF board. If I'm correct, I think so. There is a hero coming for AMD, but I don't think that's just here yet. So I did request that because uh, I do like the difference between the white and the black boards. Let's get that nice and straight so we can see. This board I think is very, very affordable. I'll cover the price later on in this video. There's actually something under here I want to take off. The foam, this is how these boards come like this because BTF has all the connectors on the back. Now I've used the other BTF, which is this one over here. This is the Intel Z890, or sorry, Z790, because I don't have a Z890 Tough yet. I'm not sure if it will be coming. They have a Z890 Hero, which I do have. I've used it, or I do have it coming up in a build. So stay tuned for that. But yeah, basically Z790 Tough kind of similar design aesthetics, but the main change, which I really do appreciate, is now the PCB is all white. Now to me, there's nothing worse than putting this in a case. You don't see any cables, but all the PCB is black. Like, I guess you, you don't see that much PCB once you put a cooler on here, whether it's a fat air cooler, all in one cooler. I think an air cooler would cover 90% of that. Uh, you're not gonna see that, but then there are some other areas on the board that are black. Maybe not a huge deal, but for me, if you're going to do a silver whiteboard, make the PCB all white to blend in. The only thing I would do next is possibly the dim slots. Not so much the PCIe slots, you don't really see them, but yeah, dim slots and then the board all white as well. Let's get that nice and straight so we can see. Actually, before we talk about the main side, let's go over the back. So Intel Z790, the AMD B850 over here. It's probably going to be very similar in terms of where all the ports are because they have to stay to a particular standard. You can't just move this anywhere you want because when you put it in the case, they have a cutout for these ports, but sometimes there might be a support bar going over here on the cutout. So they can't just put these over a bit. There's normally like on the back of the case, there's like a cutout here. Then there's a, not a cutout because there can't be a cutout here because this is where your motherboard standoff is to screw the board into the case. And you can see it's the same on this one. So normally there'll be a cut out here, cut out here, no cut out there, cut out here. You can see the margins are so fine that they can't have a cut out here, but then the cut out has to start here and then go around here, go around here. So these all have to have a bit of sort of metal on the case to screw in for the standoffs. <laughs> but yeah, most BTF or even most back neck motherboards always look the same sort of on the back of the ports because that's where the ports have to go for those cases. Uh, basically fan headers at the top, missing one up here, well obviously being AMD Intel, there are gonna be some slight differences. All your power down the side. Looks like now they've ditched the AAA pin, so they've just gone on this board with the single 12 volt high power. They have the 12 volt high power here. They also had triple A pins because I guess when Z790 first came out, the 12 volt high power was basically early introduction for that. So that's why they did both, but now they've just skipped it to go with the single 12 volt high power. Anyway, let's move on to the main side. All right, so main aesthetics, are obviously the white PCB. You've still got that silver and white aesthetic on the uh, heatsink covers. On the Intel, you had to remove this whole cover. So this was one big cover for your M.2s. This is all solid, doesn't get removed. You've just got the 
uh, where it says get tough, game tough, that is your dual M.2 heatsink cover. And then you've got the one here. They don't need to remove anything else. And then that's it. I kind of glad they removed this. This looks like a ruler design. I'm not sure what it's meant to be. Can you even see that? That design there, I don't know. To me, it throws it off a little bit. This one is, I think, a little bit cleaner. They have moved some little notches onto this side here, but you can't see it. Maybe a little bit too much too much text for me. Get tough, game tough is on here, which I think is not as easy to see. If you have a look at that, I don't even know if that's picking that up. The get tough, game tough is over here. You can definitely see that. And then we have, we got your back. I don't know if we need that, but definitely a lot. Tough gaming here. Tough gaming, that's the model number, which I guess is standard. All right, let's move this one out of the way. Let's move this one into frame so we can talk about this. So, the main aesthetics of the board we just covered are things like features like the postcode you're not going to get on this board. It is quite affordable. You will get your, right here, your diagnostic LEDs. Now, I think these are pretty much just as good, if not better, than the postcode. Now, I'm not just saying that because this board doesn't have it, but when you have, it says CPU, DRAM, VGA, and boot. Now, when you turn on your system, it goes like red CPU, red DRAM, then I think it flashes back to CPU, then it goes VGA, and each time that light clears, it's progressing past that item in, in the boot sequence, and then it will go to boot, and it normally goes to green, and then I believe a white solid light on some boards. And that normally tells you the sequence, but if it gets stuck on one of those things, like get stuck on DRAM, you know there's an issue with DRAM, could be your memory frequency, you might need to clear CMOS and change it, or it gets stuck on CPU, you might need to reset your CPU, you may not even have a CPU in there, and so on. But if you get a postcode that says 55, that's normally memory, which I know, you will need to look up those codes, um, 00, 55, and they like they don't go all the way up to 100 in, in order, but they do jump quite a few. But normally when you get up to like 97, 99, then it will, it will boot. But having these direct LED lights just will tell you what it's getting stuck on. And I kind of do like that because then I don't have to go searching for what those Q code errors are. Uh, moving on to some of the newer M.2 Q features. I talk about these in all of my videos. We'll remove this sticker because that just tells you how to remove the new Q release for the PCI. M.2 one is here. Actually, I was going to push on that. It's really weird. A lot of their boards are on the right side looking at it. This one's on this side. That just releases off. Small little heatsink. And that's it there. So that will release your M.2 heatsink. This will go into your M.2 Q release. That just locks in. No more of the dropping it down and then spinning that little knob around. And then to release it, you just pick it off like that. Let me remove this and see if it's got the M.2 slide. The slide is the one where it doesn't have the M.2 Q release. It's got that little slide to slide it left or right for different size. M.2 drives, but most people are going to be using 2280. I don't think anyone's going to use uh, 22110, which is the next size up, or 2230, which is the smaller size down, which are normally for those handheld consoles and so on. But this one can do the 2210 here. You can see it's even got the Q release here. You just need to remove this one completely. You can do the longer one. These two are stuck at your 2280. So that's the M.2 Q release. No Q slide on this board. I think it's mainly the ROG boards that have those and then the new PCIe Q release is this one here. So you can see this slot is already sort of ejecting back. That's because when you put the card in, you just have to rock it slightly towards the back. That'll release that and then you pull it out. You don't pull it straight up because that won't engage the release. You just need to rock it back and out it comes. With the uh, bottom one here, this is normal. You need to push that in or push it down yourself to eject it. That's the old school one on how it is done. Now, while I'm talking about this area here, you might be wondering what this connector here is. Now, you might think this is like a random four byte slot, but this is the actual BTF connector. So you've got the BTF boards where all your connectors are on the back, and then you've got this BTF connector for your GPU. Now, this is for specific Zeus or ROG video cards. This one here is a 4070 Ti. It's a white BTF. And it's got this sort of edge connector here that goes into that slot. I won't push this down now because I can't while well, it's on a table, but it basically goes in like that. And then if I put this up like this, you can see it goes in that slot and that will completely power this card. There's no 
edge connector on the front side. It gets all the power through the back and then you just have to plug in the corresponding 12 volt high power on the back here. And that's basically how that's done. I covered some of this at Computex where they have a new design where you might be thinking, well, this card can only work in a board that has this, which is correct. It can work in this one over here, which has this, you can see it there. It can work in any of the other BTFs like the Hero. It has this, but if you wanna put this on a non-BTF board, you can't because this is just gonna smash into whatever heatsink or is in the way. The new design, I'll get some B-roll on that so we can see that this is like a modular connector now. You have a bit of a plane inside, you put on a modular connector and that then extends it out and you can push it in this slot. So things like resale value, all of that type of stuff is gonna be fixed on the newer BTF cards because they will work in any motherboard. If you don't wanna use the BTF, you just rip that connector off. It'll fit in any board, it won't foul. So that is nice that they are doing that. Um, so that's the new PCIe or the new uh, QM.2 Q release and the PCIe Q release features. Power stages is 14 to one. Nothing high end or nothing super high end, but 14, I think on AMD is still pretty good. Like I just covered the AMD Apex that just came out the new board. That is 18. This board is uh, 14. So for the price of this board, I'm just trying to think how many times cheaper. This is over three times, or actually this is exactly three times cheaper than the Apex. Now for memory, you have four DIMM slots, one, two, three, four, and that is up to 256 gig. 256 is the new supported standard. You can now get 64 uh, gigabyte modules. I haven't seen anyone releasing them yet, but there are 64 gig modules coming. No doubt uh, you will need to do a BIOS update on any older boards. I think this board that just came out or any boards that have just come out, BIOS should be fine. Anything older, you'll probably need to update to get those supported modules. Because most of the time before they were the 24s or the 48s if you're rocking those and then the 16s. Uh, but yeah, definitely now they have those uh, 64 gig modules, which is good. And that's up to 8,000 mega transfers on the 9,000, 8,000 and 7,000 series processors. For the PCIe slots, there's not many. We've got one, two, three, two physical 16s, one electrical 16, which is this one here. That is obviously for your primary GPU. That runs at uh, Gen 5, full 16. The bottom PCIe, this is Gen 4. This, has, this is locked at 4x mode. I can see it down there. It only goes to about here for the pins. And normally you can always tell by underneath. You can see the traces there, all the actual pins that go through it. It is only a 4x slot. They just give you the full 16 width in case you're using a card that doesn't need 16 but is physically 16 in the actual slot size. Now there's also a PCIe 4 one by slot over here if you're running a one by device. So for any lane sharing, the M.23, which I believe is going to be this one, yep, it says M.23, it is shared with the second PCIe, which is this one. So they share the same bandwidth, this one and this one. So if you're using this one, uh, that'll be disabled, or if you're using this one, that will be disabled, vice versa. So you need to sort of toss up if you're gonna use the M.2 or you're going to use a card in that slot. For your M.2 slots, there's not too many. There's just the one, two, three, no DIM.2 cards or anything on the side, no extra expansion. The first one is a Gen 5, and the bottom two uh, side by side are both Gen 4s, and then you have your 2280 size, your 22110, the longer one, and then the 2280 for that one. And these two, are, as I said, they're both the PCIe Gen 4. For network, you have Realtek 2.5, which is here. Actually, I didn't take this off. I think this is the only peel on this board. I don't think I did any other peel. Uh, 2.5 ethernet there. Nothing too crazy like five or 10. It's got Wi-Fi 7, 160 megahertz channel bandwidth, and that's 2.9 gigabits for the transfer rate. And once again, it has the, I'll take it off just in case uh, people don't watch. I do these. The same thing in just about every video, but then again, not everyone's gonna watch every single video over and over again. Someone may only watch this one, and it has the new, or newish, quick release for your Wi-Fi. Push it in, push it in, no more screwing and all of that random stuff to get it screwed in. Just push it straight out like that. And I do appreciate how this is white as well. I think they've been doing this for a few generations now on the white antenna. So still moving back to the rear, for USB, there's a total of 12, which I think is pretty good. 
for this board, you have one USB 20, which is a type C. That's that one right there. We have three USB type A, which are your tens. One, two, three, that's your more aqua color. We have four USB five type A. So that's your dark blue, one, two, three, four. And we have two standard USB two, which are these two here. So obviously running any older school devices, plug it into those two and keep the faster ones for anything like storage and so on. One neat little feature I did find is it is the BIOS flashback. Now on the higher end ROG board, you normally see them up here. It's got the little built-in LED behind it, so you can see it. There's just a simple switch here. You put the BIOS on your USB stick, put it in this one that's labeled with BIOS. You can use this USB port normally for other devices like mouse keyboard, but when you do want to flash your BIOS, put your BIOS on your USB, stick it in there, hold this down for a couple of seconds. This light will start flashing. So that'll allow you to flash the BIOS, say for something like new memory support comes out or new CPU support comes out, you don't have that CPU. You don't need to borrow that CPU to update your BIOS. You can flash the BIOS with no memory, no CPU, no nothing. You just need your EPS, your 24 pin plugged in and you can flash that BIOS. And I'm pretty happy to see it is now on a board at this price level. Yeah, that's a total of nine type A USB and one type C. For the front USB, which is actually confusing, it's rear USB, but it's for the front panel, which is now on the back. You have one USB 10 gigabits connected, which is that one there. No fancy fast charging, anything like that. You have one USB 3.0, which is your five gigabit. So that'll do your two uh, five gigabit front panel headers. And then your dual USB 2.0, which will give you your four, which is pretty good. But I think for that, that is pretty much it on this board. I'm seeing if there's any more other IO I miss. HDMI display port, which is handy on this. These AMD CPUs will now do your GPU. I think from the 7000s, they did that. The 8000 and the 9000 have the built-in GPU on all of their chips. Covered all that audio there. If anyone does like the actual separated audio, not like on the newer boards, you might only get like the one line out and the headphones. Now you get the dedicated line out, line in, sub, rear, and the mic in as well. But for the price, I've probably teased you quite a bit. You're looking at 250 US dollars for this board. Now, I think that's pretty good. If you've got a sick white build coming up, a lot of cases are now doing uh, BTF. A lot of the Zeus ones, I think all of Lian Lee ones are, Fantex ones, everyone I covered at Computex are now doing the back and neck support. So if you pair this in a case looking like that, can't see anything at all when it comes to connectors, everything's on the back. You pick up a GPU like this. Now I do believe the ROG Astral is now coming out in white as well. I did cover some other white. They've got some tough GPUs from AMD, some tough from Nvidia. This one's a little, little bit older. It's the 4070 Ti. They now have the current gen in white coming out as well. So you compare this with the 50 series or even an AMD, throw it in this board and you'll have no wires at all. But anyway, I think that's it. I want to thank you guys for watching. I want to thank Zeus for sending this out and we'll see you in the next one.